Onyx Maps is one of the most vital resources that I use that contributes to my elk hunting success, but it starts long before we start chasing bugles. Let's go to my computer and I'll walk you through the process I use to use Onyx Maps as a resource for elk hunting success. To begin, I actually like to start off with Google Earth and being able to get a 3D perspective of the potential area I want to hunt just gives me a clear picture. And within Google Earth, I like to identify four key features being security, feed, water, and then bedding areas. So to start with, I take a, an area I'm looking at hunting and just get a, a real high view, kind of the whole area there. And what I'm looking for first are north facing slopes, bedding areas. So those stand out really well. I've got the perspective facing north being this way. So I'm kind of looking back into some bedding areas. And I just want to identify some of those key bedding areas. Once I identify bedding areas, I'll look for water sources, I'll look for feed sources, and then I'll kind of put all of those together. I'll put pins in each of those places. And so I just start and I just kind of get an idea. This looks pretty good over here. We've got a burn area, which I really like. Some of these fringe areas along a burn. So we've got this burn here. It looks like maybe there's a road through the burn. We've got good north faces all along here for good bedding area. You can see some of the bottoms are really green, so I know we've got some water sources in there. Uh, there's some lakes up high, some high altitude, really green meadows. Uh, there's going to be water in there, there's a lake there, so water's not an issue. Uh, a couple of these roads, maybe they're closed for logging or burns. Uh, but anyway, I'll just put a couple pins on here of areas that really stand out to me. So the first one, we've got a north facing bedding area. I'll just title that bedding area. Uh, let's get another bedding area or two. We've got some over here. There's a bedding area. And let's get us another one down a little further farther here. Got some good fingers over in here, but I really like this concentration in this basin in here. So we'll put one more bedding area right there on that north slope. Again, these are just potential areas that are north facing. There's, there's several multiple bedding areas in there. So we'll hit OK there. I'm going to mark a couple of these roads just so I find that access. Got a road, we'll put road. And we don't know if the roads are open or anything yet, but we're going to find out. Got another road up high, just in case that one's closed. We've got to find access to get into the area first. I love that burn area. I'm gonna put a pin there just in the center of the burn. Looks like it was a pretty spotty burn, kind of jumped around, left plenty of timber all over in there. Great feed source uh, over in here. Got water, we got burn, we got timber, lots of, lots of good areas to choose from in here. I'm going to put some water. Looks like we've got a lot of green in the bottom here. So I'll mark that with some water. Uh, there's going to be water all over in that bottom, I think. Also got some water over here. Looks like maybe a spring coming out of the side of the hill running down here where we've got some more burn. So I'm going to mark that as a spring. And now we need some feed sources. So when you look in here for feed sources, what I'm really looking for are some of the south exposures, some of these open ridges that maybe will grow some grass. Uh, anywhere in here, there might be some lush grass in here. The edges of the burn are going to be good areas for those elk to come and feed. So if they were bedding in here, we're, we'll pretend this road isn't open right now because I don't know if it is or not. We've got bedding area here. We've got water in here. These would be great feed sources uh, over into any of this. I'm just going to put a couple pins for feed source potential. And I'll put another one over to the right there on that ridge. And 
And one more. Uh, let's come down in here. Got another feed source potentially down on some of these open hillsides. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about 10 pins placed in this area. Now from here, this is where we've got a good idea. And I would, I would go into this area saying I could probably find some elk in here, generally speaking. Now, we don't know really anything about the details from Google Earth. From a physical perspective, this looks really good. But the power of Onyx Maps really starts to shine when we transfer all of these pins over to waypoints in my hunt application. So to do that, I'll organize all of these pins into a folder. So let's create a folder here. I will call it on X hunt one. And then I'll move all of these pins over into that folder. Now let's drop them right in there. Maybe. We'll move them one at a time. So each of these pins are getting put into the folder. And the reason this is helpful is then we just save the folder and import the folder into OnX. So I'll turn those off, turn it back on, just right click on it. And I'm going to say save place as. We want to save this OnX Hunt 1 and we want it as a KML file. So KML. Hit save. So now what we want to do is open up on X. And to open on X, we're just going to jump into onxmaps.com. Log into our membership. Login. Now we're open. So what I want to do is before I even go into anything on the mapping, I just want to go over to my content and I want to deselect everything. And then I want to go into import file. And from computer, And we're just going to go into documents. Here's our file, our Onyx Hunt 1 KML. And I will choose that one. And then I want to save it to my content. It says the save was successful. So now we can go into my content. And here are all of our locations we just marked on Google Earth. Already transferred in. Okay, so now that we've got our Google Earth pins transferred over to our Onyx Hunt application here on the computer, I'm able to see all of those waypoints that we added in uh, Google Earth here in my Onyx. And the first thing I want to do is jump into my layers. So in my map layers, I go down to the state. I want to turn on private land and government land. And we can see that we've got a whole bunch of National Forest land. So it's all public land up in here. We don't have any private land down here in some of the foothills area. Definitely private land down there, but we're good here. The other thing that I want to make sure is turned on is underneath the hunt layer. I can turn on historic wildfires and current wildfires. Wilderness areas turned on. There are also several others. Timber cuts. We can turn on timber cuts. Uh, so we're good there. And then the last one is on trails and rec. So I make sure that recreational sites and trails are turned on. And that way we can see access into a lot of that area. So what we'll notice here is with all of that turned on, we are showing this historic burn area up here, which we knew it was burned. We've got that highlighted there. There's some more burn down in here. We can also see this trail. So I can click on the trail and we can see that this trail is non-mechanized, so no motors, horse and hiking only, which is great if we can get into here relatively easily. So as we come down the trail a ways, we see there's a Forest Service road here, there's campgrounds. So from this trailhead, I'm going to measure the distance here. And we've got 
just rough estimating the distance. A couple switchbacks, back and forth to get back up into that area. We're looking at about 2.8 miles. So that's perfect. There's areas up in here I marked within about a mile and a half of the trailhead. Uh, a lot of that's great. Remote enough that we're able to get in there and not worry about too much pressure, but not so far back in there that we have to have horses or something. So this has been a great area so far. Everything that, that we've needed uh, to see, we've been able to see it's a national forest. It's somewhat remote, but we can hike back in there. It's about a three mile hike. Uh, we've got no private land to contend with. We've got roaded access getting us back to the trailhead there. So now we can take these and they've come across as Google Earth pins and we've converted them to Onyx waypoints. So this one up here, this is what we marked as a road. It's actually a trail, so it doesn't do us any good. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one. We delete it. That's gone. This here we've got a lot of different areas to look at here but this one is the one that we marked as feed this is an open hillside as we're going in so now i can come in and the beauty of this is it's so customizable so we've got feed source there so we can go access antelope arrow atv bear bedding areas all these different things and what i want to put there is a feeding area so it gives me a little grass sprouts there i know it's a feeding area just to keep it consistent we will make it uh, let's go brown so brown is going to be our feeding areas and then I'll save that and now if we come over on this side we've got burn up here we've got a feeding area right here so we're going to click on that we're going to go down to our feeding icon we're going to make it brown and we're going to save it and I can go through to each one of these. I can rename them if I want to. I can put dates on them. If I see elk when I'm scouting, I can put cow elk or bull elk with a date. All of that detail and information is right there in those icons. So as I go through and do that, then I can see within that area, very easy to read, very easy to understand, kind of a legend showing me where feeding areas are, where water is, where bedding areas are, and really helps me keep these different icons uh, really well organized. Then when I go in there and put boots on the ground, if some of those areas change, I can delete them, I can add new ones, and I can really dial it in from there. Okay, so with all of the icons changed and organized, I can easily pick out all of my bedding areas. I can pick out water sources. I can see feed sources. And now I can kind of start to get an idea of, are any of these in close proximity to each other? And I can see right here, we've got close proximity. We've got some close proximity in here. So these areas are ones that I'm gonna really key in on when I go and put boots on the ground to scout it or to hunt it. Combining Google Earth and Onyx Maps through the Hunt app has allowed me to find some incredible elk areas without ever actually having to go there. Just through e-scouting and combining those two powerful resources, I'm able to find some really awesome elk country. But the beauty of it is, after I'm done researching everything and scouting here from my desk, all of those points automatically transfer straight over to my mobile device in the app there. Now when I go out and put boots on the ground to hang trail cameras or to scout for elk, or even if it's just during season and I head out, all of those points are right there on my mobile device. I can walk right to a wallow. I can walk right to a trailhead. I can walk right to a feed source and feel like I've been there a hundred times already. Onyx provides me with an actual functioning GPS unit with more details and features than any GPS unit could ever provide. Onyx has not only changed the way that I scout for elk, it's also increased the efficiency in which I'm able to find elk and be able to spend my time hunting those elk instead of trying to locate them. And that absolutely adds to my elk hunting success. And that's the power of Onyx. To learn more about Onyx Maps, visit www.onyxmaps.com and you can sign up for a premium hunt app for just $29.99. And if you use the code ELK101, you're going to save 20%. So for less than $24, you're able to get the most powerful resource for scouting and hunting to help you become a more successful elk hunter.